So there was something really repulsive but really interesting that was tweeted out by this guy named Matt Walsh, who seems to really be taking the most uh, radical stance against progress and against equality and freedoms. Uh, this guy's from the Daily Wire. He's known as the Daily Wire fourth stringer. Um, you know, there's some guys before him. Ben Shapiro, Clavin, then there's the third stringer, and then there's him. Um, here's what he's saying, but it's really interesting because I think it really speaks to a larger trend that they are missing. And I think it's interesting just to think about it, to kind of, um, instead of looking at the cl very close, close view that we have of time and the way that trends work and how things go... Why don't we look at this in a way that's more um, more long-term type of thing, right? Why don't we look at it more as a long-term um, analysis type of thing, right? So here's what he says. He says, The number of kids who identify as LGBT, especially trans and bisexual, has absolutely skyrocketed. If you think this is natural or organic development, you're deluded. The media, Hollywood, and the school system actively recruit children <laughs> to the LGBT ranks. LGBT identification rises to 5.6% in the latest U.S. estimate. The number of supposedly trans children and young adult adults is 10 times higher than the number among older generations. Do you think that's because a lot more people are born in the wrong body these days? Whatever the hell that even means. No, this is social engineering. In our culture, the LGBT lobby poses the greatest threat to our children, especially the T part. So... Uh, what he's trying to do here is he's trying to separate the LGBT community between the gay people and the trans people. So it's to try to uh, formulate basically a schism or like a, a fight essentially in a separation, you know, divide and conquer kind of strategy. But I mean, it honestly seems self-defeating already in terms of the point that I'm trying to get into, which is to look at it more in the long term, right? Because the battle for the vast majority of the battle in terms of gay marriage, it's already been won, right? I think the opinion now is like 60 plus percent uh, that gay marriage is okay and it's legal and it should be legal and it's okay and, you know, all of this stuff. There's still a lot of homophobia out there for sure, right? Um, and there's still like a, a disgusting amount of people who don't believe in it. But in general, it has been won already. Um, and now they've kind of switched their front to the trans people. Now, obviously, people are going to be, <clears throat> you're going to see higher percentages for this. One, because these weren't really things that were as normally recognized back then. Um, although trans people existed a long time ago. This is not some new phenomenon. Uh, but same thing with being gay, people coming out. People are coming out more um, because they are comfortable uh, in the environments that they're in. Because people are starting to be more uh, accepting of that. So what happens is, and this is thing, you know, that Lincoln Project guy who has a wife, he has kids, and, you know, he's secretly gay, basically. You know, there's so many of these people who have repressed being gay because they know that they won't be accepted or that they'll be basically essentially ostracized, and they're not comfortable. And now that that whole thing has changed, more people are coming out as gay because it's more acceptable. And so that's why there's more people doing that. It's pretty obvious. Same thing with trans, by the way. Same exact thing. Same exact concept. It's just that battle is still kind of beginning in terms of acceptance. <clears throat> Even more interesting tweet he sends out. He says, The conservative movement needs to draw a hard line on the gender stuff. There is no room for anyone who falls on the wrong side of it. If you're willing to even entertain the idea that maybe boys should be in the girls' locker room, you're useless. Get out. We don't need you. And if you're so damn dumb and clueless that you still go around insisting that this issue is a sideshow or not a hill worth dying on or whatever... You're just as useless. Go somewhere else and argue about tax cuts, you spineless clown. So um, I guess he's calling, you know, conservatives who would rather talk about tax policy and stuff like that, substantive stuff. Uh, he would want to call that, you know, those people spineless, which is an interesting take. Um, but basically what he's trying to do here is he's trying to make the conservative movement commit suicide. That's essentially what he's trying to do. Um, anytime, you know... When you sort of step back and look at more of the trends, right, none of these sort of really conservative uh, cultural movements survive. Eventually, they die off. Um, that means gay rights is a movement in the United States that has essentially already won. It has not been won in the rest of the world, but I promise you, you know, in the next some years, it will, it will be won as time goes on, right? Oppression can only last so long until people open up their minds. So that will continue. 
Um, but for the most part, you know, the, the gay marriage rights and all that stuff has, has already won in the United States. Um, you know, same thing goes for African American rights and all of these different groups, women's rights, you know, in terms of women's suffrage, you know, um, you know, the 19th amendment, uh, you know, I think that was just, that was like the 1900s, I think, wasn't it? It was in like 1920s something. It's not all that crazy long ago. It's like a hundred years. It's not that long. People are like, there might even be some people still alive from then. <laughs> so it's not all that long ago. These are things that eventually you don't win. Imagine a hundred years ago. This is the, this is the equivalent of a hundred years ago or maybe 120 years ago saying the conservative movement needs to draw a hard line on the gender stuff. There is no room for anyone who falls on the wrong side of it. If you're willing to even entertain the idea that a woman is equal to a man, you're useless. Get out. We don't need you. It's the same thing. You can just fill in whatever social movement and progress that has happened um, that has won. Literally anything. Any of it. These things don't last. Your attempt at a last stand is... It's just such a failure. It's like... It's like the Nazis trying to defend themselves when they had already been essentially run out of, you know, the USSR. Like, this shit's over. You lost. It's an L. You're on the defensive and you know you're going to lose. I don't know why you would do this. I mean, obviously, his personal opinion must be very strong about this. I don't know if he's uh, in the closet or if he's, you know... We know uh, Steven Crowder seems to be really into cross-dressing. And you see a lot of pastors coming out as gay or usually they get found out, I think is what it is. But to just analyze it from more of a long-term perspective, which is not even really a quote-unquote long-term perspective because a lot of this stuff is pretty recent. Again, um, you know, <laughs> gay marriage was only legalized in 2014. That was like seven years ago. Okay, that's nothing. Um, but just to look at it more in a long-term thing, you know, the conservative movement needs to draw a hard line on the race stuff. There's no room for anyone who falls on the wrong side of it. If you're willing to even entertain the idea that a black person is the same as a white person, you're useless. Get out. We don't need you. Like, just imagine doing that, right? Um, and just, like, reading a newspaper article from, like, what, like, 200, 200 years ago or something like that. Um, it's laughably stupid. That, but the fact that people can't see this, people can't, like, get out of their little bubble and think more in long-term details and long-term trends it it's really a failing <laughs> intellectually speaking i mean that's what it is i think more more than anything else i think it's just something that he's probably really repressed about i don't know why you would hold such a strong opinion about this and yes um you know it definitely makes sense to be born with a physical body that does not match uh your brain i don't know why that's such a crazy thing as if humans like don't have you know uh varying things happening i don't understand that you know, so it's an interesting one because there's going to be a fight in the conservative movement. We already saw it happening between Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro, if you recall. Well, Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro on one side versus the Proud Boys and those guys. Um, the Proud Boys guys were basically saying gay people don't belong in, in, in the conservative movement. Ben Shapiro saying no, uh, gay people do belong in the conservative movement. So there's going to be that battle. There's going to be that battle. And just like the trans issue is now, probably 10, 20 years from now, we'll look at it completely the same way we look at the, the gay marriage battle. Um, but the fact that people can't see this, is, conservatives can't see this, is truly remarkable to me. Um, that kind of stuff is going to be very normalized in the next 20 years, especially because um, for most people, I think for them to understand, they have to experience it and usually what that means is one of their family members comes out as gay or trans or whatever and they have to learn to accept it. and then that kind of moves on that's kind of how it works usually <clears throat> and we know that a lot of conservatives when they actually experience something they change their opinion on it we saw that recently with megan mccain on um maternity leave you know uh dick cheney i think his daughter is gay or something and so he's pro-gay rights or whatever you know just stuff like that john, uh, john mccain was tortured so he was anti-torture that kind of a thing so it's just it's a really short-sighted comment and just a stupid idea for your movement because you're essentially committing suicide to your own movement not only are you creating this huge divide in your own movement um you're basically saying oh <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna take a position that's gonna be so uh, detrimental to us we're gonna have no way of winning anything uh blair white is a pretty staunch conservative and uh she has claimed that you know um 
anybody who's a Republican who doesn't accept LGBT is part of the past. Well, is it? I don't know.